If you've ever wondered what makeup was like 18 years ago, we're going to find out today. I just found this Sephora catalog from 2004 in my closet and I wanted to just flip through it with you guys and check out all of the makeup that existed 18 years ago. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started. <music> Okay, so this is the Sephora Fall Beauty Catalog from 2004, and the theme of this catalog was Pretty Boy. It says, suit yourself with a handsome fall look. I actually started working at Sephora in 2004, so this is definitely going to bring back a lot of memories and things that we had in the store. So let's flip open to the first page here. We have the NARS Multiple in Palm Beach. These actually still do exist. I don't know if this particular color is still around, but... NARS definitely still makes the multiple, and it was $35 then. I think it's kind of around the same thing now, but I'm not sure. And this is a product I really, truly miss. This is the Oscar Blondie Jasmine Hair Serum. This was like the best hair serum. It made my hair so smooth and silky. I loved it. Sephora also used to carry Lorac Cosmetics, so this is one of their eyeliners. We have a Smashbox blush here in Smashing Emotion, and a NARS eyeshadow in Barbuda. That looks like a gorgeous kind of smoky purple. We have the Dior Kiss Luscious Lip Plumping Gloss in Red Current. So I'm guessing that's probably what she's wearing here. And the Benefit Black Orchid Highlighter Duo. On the next page, we have Benefit's Bad Gal Lash. This actually still exists today. So that one's definitely stood the test of time. I feel like a lot of Benefit products have. They also still have Dandelion. Then they had two more things. I guess they must have had a Black Orchid collection at the time because this is the Black Orchid eyeshadow in Fate Made Me Do It. That's beautiful. And then the Black Orchid lip gloss in It Was Just a Matter of Time. So the Bad Gal Lash was $18 for the full size back then. I wonder what it is today. I'd be so curious. And then over here we have some Lorac products. I really miss Lorac being at Sephora. I don't know if you guys remember these, but I remember them so well. The lip polish. They actually looked like a little nail polish bottle. And then they also had the multiple rush sticks, which were kind of similar to those NARS multiples. Here they also had a mascara, an eyeshadow duo, and then an eyeshadow crayon. On the next page we have some products from Sephora Collection and Smashbox. Back then it was actually called Sephora brand. Over here we have the all over color blush. Do they still have that? I feel like that name still sounds familiar. And then we have a cream all over color in white pearl. Doesn't this look just like the Flower Beauty Day Glow highlighter? This looks so similar. And then over here we have a cream eyeliner palette as well in really pretty blue colors. Their super shimmer was a lip gloss. And then here's their mascara again. Over here with Smashbox they had a lip gloss in the shade Mood. That is a really kind of funky color. You could see it here on her lips, it looks like they used their lip gel first and then they topped it with this yellow gloss. Smashbox also had these eyeshadow duos forever. I don't believe they make them anymore. And then um, this double-ended mascara, it had a primer on one side and the mascara on the other. I totally remember that as well. Moving on, we have some products from NARS. We have the NARS lip glosses in Dirty Shame and Pampa. I know they still make their lip gloss. I don't know if they have these specific colors. Then we have the lipstick in Layla, the NARS blush in Taos. I don't believe they make this color anymore, but look at how stunning that was. So pretty. And then their eyeshadow single in Ashes to Ashes. I just love all of these colors. I think they look gorgeous. Then we have a little perfume sample here. And then over here we have a Smashbox Single Eyeshadow in Smashing Sensory and the Sephora Cream Eyeliner Palette in Earth Tones. It looks like she's wearing that green right here. That looks so beautiful. 
another Lorac lip polish. And then over here we have Sue Devitt lipstick. Do you guys remember that brand? I believe it was from Australia originally, and I don't know if this is still around. I'd be curious to find out. Sephora also used to carry a brand called Pout, and this was one of their blushes. On the next page, we have the Stila Smudge Pot. These, are they still around? I can't remember off the top of my head. I feel like they might be. The Dior Addict Ultra Gloss. This looks almost the same packaging wise as it still does today. It was $22 back then. I'm curious to see how much of the price has gone up for this. We also had a Tarte lipstick in the shade Flirt. This was only $16. That seems pretty reasonable. And do any of you guys remember the brand Paula Dorf? They were also a makeup artist brand at Sephora. And this is one of their blushes. I really loved their concealer. They had an amazing concealer from that line. The cargo blush as well. These cargo blushes were a big deal. I remember Jennifer Aniston, I think, talking about how she wore them and they just blew up and everybody wanted them. Tony and Tina also had a makeup line. Again, I'm not sure if that's something that still exists, but this is one of their eye pencils. If I remember correctly, it was kind of a little bit like Urban Decay's line. It was a little bit more alternative. It had a lot of color, a lot of glitter. Too Faced had these single eyeshadows. They were the Couture eyeshadows, and this was the shade Eris. And Hard Candy was also sold at Sephora. This is one of their little single shadows as well in Peppermint Patty. Deluxe Beauty was a brand that was founded by Jillian Dempsey. I don't believe that they are around anymore, but she's a celebrity makeup artist. And then we had Bourjois. They were at Sephora, and I loved both of these things right here. These were my two favorite products from them. Their lip glosses and their blushes were fantastic. I really miss being able to get their products in the United States. I'm not sure any place here sells them anymore. Over here we have a get the look page with all different eye products and these are all in more earthy tones. So up here we have some greens, a NARS duo in Earth Angel. I used to have that one. The Pop Eye Cake in bright green. Pop had a bunch of these little eye cakes. They didn't really sell all that well, honestly. And Pop Beauty, I believe, is now in CVS and they've kind of changed their brand quite a bit. Here we have the Sephora Collection um, eyeshadow quad, and these were not the best. I feel like their eyeshadows have come a long way. Here we have a Stila eyeshadow duo in Starlight and Twig, and then Sue Debit Studio Eye Glide. So this was like a liquid shadow that had a roller ball, actually. It was kind of messy to apply. And this is also from that brand Pout. It's like a split pan eyeshadow. And over here we have some darker grayish tones. We have the Sephora All Over Color, an Urban Decay threesome, which is what they called like their trio eyeshadows, and then a Too Faced split pan eyeshadow duo. On this side, we have some lip products. So again, there are some repeats. We have the Bourjois Effect 3D Gloss, the Sephora Super Shimmer. Stila had lip pots. I forgot about these. These were really nice. They were kind of like a thicker, lacquer style gloss. They had a lot of pigment to them. And then Benefits Gloss as well. We also had a lipstick from Paul and & Joe and Vincent Longo, and I think these are two brands also that I don't really see around anymore. I don't know if they are still in existence or not. Uh, the Dior Kiss Gloss. Sephora also had these lip markers, and they were incredibly dry. Not a big fan of those. And we have the Lancome Rouge Sensation. Then we have some hair products. So we have uh, Sephora Collection had some hair products. I loved the body butter that was in this packaging. It, I think it was called the Super Supreme Body Butter. It was incredible. Maybe it'll be further on in this catalog. But they also used to carry Fakai products and just a lot of brands that we don't see at Sephora anymore. Um, over here we have some lip products. So here they have some lip prep options. Here's City Lips. City Lips still does exist. It's not at Sephora anymore and they've really changed their packaging a lot. This looks incredibly different from what it does now. Uh, DDF had a lip treatment kit so you came with an exfoliator and then a gloss. I remember having that as well. And then do you guys remember the Benefit Lipscription? This had like an AHA buffing beads treatment and then a balm that went on top of it afterwards. It was from their Dr. Feelgood line. And then next we have some liners from Cargo, Sephora, and Tony and Tina. Then we have lipstick from Vincent Longo, Bourjois, and Paula Dorf. And then some glosses from Luscious, Chanel, and Deluxe Beauty again, which was Jillian Dempsey's line. Moving on, we have some palettes, and I feel like palettes were not as big of a deal back then as they are now. They were a lot smaller. You didn't see like these big mega palettes unless it was holiday time and then they would come out. But I feel like for the most part, palettes looked like this. So we have a Chanel Eye Quad up here. We have the Sephora Starstruck palette, then the Sue Debit Starbrights Lip and Cheek palette. 
I do remember these Smashbox trios. I actually had this Stila pocketbook. These were so cute. They gave you three eyeshadows and a blush, and they came in this little leatherette case. They were so cute, like just to pop in your purse. I would love it if they'd make those again. That would be awesome. Then we had the Cargo Lip Quads. I remember these well. And Fresh Skincare actually used to have a makeup line. I don't know if they still do. If they do, it's definitely not at Sephora, but maybe on their website. I'm not sure. And this was actually a Tarte palette from back then. It was $48 for eight shades, which seems kind of steep considering they have larger palettes that I think are less than that these days. But this one, I remember it was kind of annoying because it folded over. I actually did have it, but these eyeshadows folded onto these and it always kind of made a mess and a lot of the um, darker colors from over here would get into this white shade which always bothered me. Here we have some gadgets, Sephora collection brushes and they had like a train case, a brush roll, they had some makeup wipes and other tools. Then over here we have some beauty quick fixes. So we had Urban Decay's lingerie and galoshes for lashes. So the lingerie side was a lash primer, the galoshes was a waterproof top coat, and then here we had the Lorac neutralizer for your skin to kind of correct ruddiness. Sephora Collection blotting papers. This was from Derma Doctor, and this was their Eye Spy Serum for under the eyes. It had like a yellow tint to it, so it was color correcting, and also it had like retinol and caffeine and all these things to sort of help with eye bags and things like that. Does anybody remember Jessica Simpson's dessert line? This was all edible body products. So this was the hair and body mist and everything that you could use in this line, you could actually like spray it onto your skin and then lick it off. And believe me, people were doing that in the stores all day long. Here we have a Sephora collection concealer palette, the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, which still exists today. We have the Paula Dorf Perfect Illusion, which was kind of like a little primer for around your eyes and lips. It was a clear kind of waxy product that just sort of filled in the lines temporarily. And then Hard Candy's Out Damn Spot, which was basically just a concealer pencil. Over here we have some more Oscar Blondi hair products, which were so good. Some Sephora Collection nail products, as well as the Deborah Lippmann nail polish. Anastasia Beverly Hills back then was literally just brow products. That's all they had. And here we have the Super Supreme Body Butter. This is the one I was talking about. I don't believe Sephora Collection makes this anymore, but it was fabulous. It was like my all-time favorite body butter. So good. They also had a brand called Lola Cosmetics, and they had these adorable, cute little, like, tiny keychain lip glosses. This was one of the lipsticks, and it had a little mirror that flipped out. They were adorable. Stila had a hair freshening powder, so this was like a powder that you just shake into your roots, kind of like dry shampoo, but before dry shampoo was really uh, popular. Too Faced Lip Injection, this still exists, it's just in different packaging, and this is $18.50, so I don't know what they charge for it these days, but I'd be curious to see. Then we had a hair serum from Carez. This was to prevent split ends, and Benefit had a moisturizer called Dear John. Then we have some Chanel liquid eyeshadows and Jill Sander Pure Perfume. And then we have a whole page of other fragrances, Armani Mania, Paul Smith Extreme for men and women, Kenneth Cole Black for men and women, Roberto Cavalli, Just Her and Just Him, Puma fragrances, Ralph Lauren Romance, of course. And then over here we have some products from like beauty experts. So we have a Peter Thomas Roth, oil blotting sheets and acne gel, Vincent Longo Blush Duo, the Fakai Hair Mask with Shea Butter, and then from Michael Kors, we had the Leg Shine. This was a hugely popular thing back then. It was basically a perfumed stick that had a little bit of bronze to it, and you're supposed to run it up and down your shins and kind of give you that really glowy, bronzy look on your legs. Then we had the Go Smile Whitening Ampules. So these, you could just break them open and then apply them right to your teeth. They had like a little sponge tip applicator, so you could just whiten your teeth on the go. Scott Barnes Body Bling. Is that Scott Barnes? Why does he look so different? Then we had the NARS Eye Brightener in Vanilla. So this had a yellow-based concealer and also a gel cream primer to kind of smooth things out. And we had a Murad Acne Kit. We sold 
so many of these kits every single day. On this page, we have the doo Lip Venom, which honestly was like the biggest lip plumper at the time. Everybody went crazy for this stuff. Too Faced did have lip injection out, but that was kind of new for this time. Lip Venom was really like the standard back then. Here we had a little lip gloss compact from a brand called Pinky Swear. I don't really remember that all that well. Um, more from Jessica Simpson's Dessert. This was a kissable belly button love potion fragrance. So you were actually supposed to roll this onto your stomach. I don't know. The Luxaton hand cream, this is still around, and Deluxe mini concealers. I totally remember this from Joey, the Pure Pores Gel Formula. This was another big one. It was supposed to remove blackheads, and a lot of people love that. Benefits Maybe Baby Perfumed Powder. I totally remember that fragrance. I used to have it. Stila's Major Lash Mascara. We have more things from Dessert Beauty. They had a body shimmer that you could lick, a kissable fragrance, and their plumping lip gloss. Air Stocking. This was kind of like that Sally Hansen stuff that they have at the drugstore now where you just kind of spray it on and it was like makeup for your legs. And this was actually a makeup line for men from Jean-Paul Gaultier. They had a bronzer, an eyeliner, and concealer duo, and then a roll-on lip gloss. And then over here we had the Hard Candy Professional Pencil System. So this was kind of like an interchangeable pencil. You had like the, the base product and then you could put a pencil, a lip pencil, an eye sponge, a lip brush, an eyeliner. You could kind of clip in whatever you wanted to use on the go. Over here we have some skincare from Carez, Juice Beauty, which the green apple peel, I think they do still have it. It's just in different packaging. Caudalie is also still around. Dr. Hauschka, Declayor. Paracone. Paracone is still here. MD Skincare, which I believe now is just called Dr. Dennis Gross. DDF was a big dermatologist brand back then, kind of like Dr. Gross or Murad, but I don't believe they're around anymore. Philosophy's Hope in a Jar, still very popular. Dr. Brandt Microdermabrasion, also still very popular. Strivectin, that's still around. Over here, we have Philosophy's Purity. This is still around too. And this was a razor burn healer that kind of looks like a bottle of glue, so that's super weird. The Rosebud Salve from uh, Smith's is still around. Fakai's Apple Cider Clearing Rinse. This was an awesome clarifying shampoo. I don't know if they still have this. Again, we have the NARS Multiple and a Brow Tamer from Lorac. Some more skincare over here from Bliss. This was their Super Minty Concentrated Body Wash for $23. Their stuff has really come down in price since then. And other things from Carez, Murad, Caudalie, all of these brands are really still there. Um, Juvena is a brand I haven't heard about in a while. I know they're not around. They were from uh, Switzerland, I believe. And then here we have the Chocolate Body Glosser from Sephora. This was sort of like a dupe for the Michael Kors leg shine that we saw a couple pages back. It looked like a little deodorant stick, but it was a bronzy color and it smelled like chocolate and you could just put it all over your arms and legs and give yourself a glow. Lancome Juicy Tubes, they recently re-released these. Again from Dessert, this was their Kissable Hot Topping. It was a massage butter that warmed up with your body heat. And I totally remember these too. These were the Urban Decay Lickable Body Powders. So these smelled amazing. You could put them on your body and then lick them and they tasted like sweet, like whatever the scent was. And these Hard Candy Bon Bon Glosses. This was a set of three, but they did sell them individually. And they were the most annoying lip glosses. First of all, they had two different colors in one. There was one shade in the bottom and then another shade on the top, but they were just a pain to open and they were always breaking. More philosophy fragrances here. And then on the back cover, we have a palette from Dior. And they were giving away a Dior handbag, which was really fun. So anyway, guys, this was fun. I loved kind of going back down memory lane. If you were wearing makeup back in 2004, you may remember a lot of these. And if you weren't, I'd just love to hear your thoughts on makeup back then and what it was like. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it so much. And if you like this video, I do have another version of it where I talk about a catalog from 2005. So I'll pop that up right there in case you're interested. Thanks so much, guys. And I'll see you in my next one. Take care. Bye.